uh, so that, uh, or alternatively, we could just uh, put up what we reckon on a whiteboard, which uh, is more commonly what we will do with the smaller budgets. Because, uh, so this is, this is what I'm talking about with the genius design not being uh, such a bad thing, because we've done the user experiments in the past with similar sites and similar things and there's similar goals and we can then uh, come back to our own genius experience and what we're, what we're aiming for is a, a very usable site that is user focused but without having necessarily done all the, uh, the work. Um, oh yeah, so the whiteboards then become actual user journeys and uh, matrices of what we want to do, what we want people to do, where and when and why. Um, right, so on to the wireframing and prototype. So, so like by this stage in um, you know, our development process, uh, we'll have like a good idea about what we're going to build and what the pages might be like and what the content types might be like and so even though that's a fairly an abstract sense we have we have a decent enough idea about what to build that we can start building it. so what we found is that we can combine the wireframing and prototyping stage at the same time and it can give really valuable development input to later design phases so that makes it easier to build to budget, especially when the budgets are small and there's not that much room for, uh, for manoeuvre. And so it's not, yeah, it's not so much I'm developing something, say, right, here's the budget and I build a prototype and say, that's the minimum viable product. Now give that to the designer and you colour it in. And but again, it's not waiting for the um, final designs to be signed off before we even start developing what this might be and then find out that actually it's a little bit more of development time than is budgeted for. Um, so the, the Drupal part, <coughs> importantly, is because it's this um, top-down system, if you like, the, there's an enormous opportunity to grab a pre-made site and play around with it. So, building like a prototyping platform, you could start from one of the many distributions. I'm building a thing that is like Commons or like a queer um, or like Open Publish um, or whatever. And so you, you install that rather than starting from scratch and putting your own modules in and further. Uh, or alternatively, you can start from your own sandbox. So you have a Drupal site that has the modules that you like to be there and the modules that you use again and again, um, all set up and have that as a, you know, a zip file with all the files in and a database of when it's set up ready to be, become your prototype. So you've got a start, a start point that isn't just installing Drupal from scratch. And I mean, the, the important thing being with Drupal is because this is so easy, um, it doesn't seem logical to wait until the final designs are signed off before we start tinkering around with this stuff. Right, and so there's, a, there's other modules as well that help for rapid prototyping. The main one is uh, Develop Generate, being part of the Develop module. Uh, I'm sure everyone, some people use this at least. Um, so you, with the developer, you could just generate a bunch of content straight off. So you, when you've created your content types, tick, click, click, I want some, all of these contents and a hundred nodes and smash away, they're all full of uh, lower bits that are ready for you to start compiling views or you know, doing your experiments. Um, it doesn't just do content either. It will create menus, users, vocabs and terms. So you can you can populate an entire site really really quickly with the uh, develop 
generate. Um, uh, this is another thing that we do at Whitefuse, is, is start from a point using real content. So we have like demo sites that we've taken time to create a demo site that has uh, things that are regularly used in the website, like a blog and a news section and, and so on and so forth. So if we, start, if we start developing from that point, we've already got real content, which makes prototyping kind of easier, just, uh, just nicer, because there's real images, not just a square or a placeholder, and um, real links, real files, real file names. So when you're prototyping, it, it makes more sense than Lorem Ips and Lorem and all over the place. Um, oh, and it also, the, another purpose this serves is uh, you get a better starting point by having the content types already there. For example, like an event content type that would have um, an image attached and a link and a time. So if you were creating a similar event thing, with starting from a point where that already exists, you don't have to redo that work. So your point of prototyping starts with a, a website already that you can just turn bits off of and um, build new content types based on standard-ish ones. Um, and another module I use a lot in prototyping is Node Convert. Uh, obviously it takes one uh, piece of content from one content type and makes it into another one. So, uh, using the event example again, you might have in your uh, in your new site that you're prototyping, you might have a couple of event or date-driven type content pieces. So you could convert all your event ones to your new event type. And the other good thing about Node Convert is you could just convert half of them. So if you and then you could do A/B testing with, uh, say, two different event content types. So convert half of them to new event, then on the same site, you can, and then you can see event one type against event two, and you can see the differences that you might develop and might design. You can show these to the designer, what do you think? And, you know, option A, option B, um, where do I go? So, oh, and also, similarly, if you've got all your event views all knocked up already, so you would just clone that view and then change the uh, content type of the master to new event, and then all that work's already done as well. Um, going far too fast. Um, the, the main way that we use features is every time we've ever built a thing, features module is installed on the site so that if we're going to build something similar again we've got a starting point so I can pull a similar thing from any of the sites we've developed and put it straight on my prototype using features and um, oh, is anyone familiar with the features module <laughs> yeah okay good and um, if not you can go look it up after the say the the point of this, as well, is say you've got um, a, a um, like a resource content type that has a video field and um, maybe conditional fields. So if it is a video, then it doesn't have these files, and these files do. Oh, there's file only, and you know. So you have a really complicated um, piece of content, a content type. Then you put it with features, and, you, and that work is already done. Maybe it's a bit different, but you can see that instead of setting up all those content fields again, it's done in a minute rather than uh, 15, 20. And that, smash it, so that, that is about the size of it. And, <laughs> and the, the recap, so cognitive design. It, that's what we're finding is working, doing the prototyping early and designers and developers talking to each other as uh, in early stages so that the designs are uh, over flourished, I guess. And um, the distributions or your own sandbox is really key for setting things up really fast. And my, my um, 
my preferred modules for prototyping are Devel, Node Convert, and Features. Um, that's pretty much at the end. Um, I was thinking that um, we, could, we could have questions, or what would be more interesting, I think, is finding out how other people are working, doing prototyping, or following different development processes. Um, I mean, I've been through all great prototyping anyway. Um, but my question is, you didn't cover much of like how you might uh, yeah, front end guy, and that's basically the something that we've been talking about. Yeah, a lot. I can tell you what we do now. We have so the theme that we develop um, for our for the prototype. So you might have seen the My World Charity Transit sign at the back. That has a lot of kind of base classes for the sort of um, classes. That, sorry, base rules for the sort of classes that Drupal will naturally want to spit out, forms, and views for all the standard sort of modules that we all develop. Um, so we have some pretty basic solid uh, style rules that sit inside there, um, already mapped out in terms of you know, style sheets for responsive and uh, other bits and pieces like that. So the whole demo site we start, of, start with is kind of you know, percentage-based, nice and fluid, all the sort of stuff we might want to do in the most kind of techy, advanced interface. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just work with that as a starting point. The same way that Prisma starts with uh, feature-based distribution, we can start with our own kind of base theme and then develop so you've, you've got your own base theme? We have our own one, yeah. Okay, and do you got to plans for things like context or panels? Yeah, well we probably, my, I personally prefer context yeah. over panels. Okay, so Prisma uh, is a bit more of a new and hard thing. Um, for me, because uh, I can get a bit more control over the HTML, panels just spits out a whole load of extra stuff for the events. Um, that I don't really like wading through, and I end up overriding kind of the way that sets column widths and stuff like that anyway. Um, so personally, I'm a bit more of a context person, mm -hmm. uh, but we do use a mixture of both depending on the time. Okay. Yeah, I think that that's the thing, is that we're at this point in, in a process that is definitely mm -hmm. at the end. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the, mainly what we do, what we focus on now is, can we put these things on a page easily and what sort of things might they be rather than you want more design stuff. Mm -hmm. But hopefully that should come very quick. I've got a question. Uh, how do you think this fits into sort of an agile way of working? So if rather than doing like the requirements gathering, prototyping and delivering something and moving that it's great, what if you are doing something very iterative and requirements well, gathering as you're going along? Yeah, I mean we we are kind of, we're, we're tending to follow that sort of process on, especially on this Agile just eats up their, their money too quickly. So we do have to kind of do blocks of work so that we, so we know what's going on. But, um, you know, once the, once the prototype is there, then, you know, you can sprint off of it from, you know, you can could, you could tie it into Agile quite easily. Um, yeah, I, I think it's very interesting. It really works for you quite well, but it's quite alien to the kind of thing I'm, I'm used to. Just because um, you're an art company, Drupal developers is a bit more kind of precious resource time-wise than um, designers. So what we tend to do is spend much more time doing things like information architecture work with the developers first, and getting the design like there, and then start to look at development. So. so I mean, I can see how, how it works with Drupal. It's so, it's so easy just to create a review and just uh, change the output of the page completely. But um, uh, so, so really, it seems to me that more what this is doing is taking the job away from wireframing and just doing it in the actual product. And that's yeah. what it seems to me. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, that's what, what we're tending to say. The wireframes still get produced because we don't want to show clients the, this terrible, ugly thing that, that I've just built because they'd scream, you know. So, but what, what we do is have a collaborative approach with, uh, with the designer. So it's, we're prototyping this, and they're having input as well at the time. You know, it's, we'll work opposite each other, so it'll be, um, I've, I've put all these things on a page, and the designer said, well, that's hideous. Um, could, could we do this sort of thing? Could we change this to that? And well, kind of, right, give me 20 minutes, and oh, yes, more like this, yes, more like this. And then, <coughs> so it's backwards and forwards all the time, yeah. rather than... Um, it's much more iterative rather than kind of sequential. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting.
Right. Two things. It sounds as if uh, somebody could do a uh, wireframe theme so that um, you uh, could automate the process of turning your not pretty thing into uh, and actually make it literally look like a wireframe. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I think there's loads of themes you could use as a, as a wireframe, really. Um, most of the most of the ones that come in court, that you know, they've got um, areas to put stuff. So, yeah, I guess. Um, um, earlier, when you said um, that Agile can um, use more resources than what you're doing, I'm really surprised because I've always thought that the purpose of Agile is to be as light and clean as possible. Uh, the, so can you yeah, but we're, um, yeah. I'm, talk I'm talking about really, really meagre budget. So. We're starting from, we're building a thing that is that's largely known what's needed rather than needing to do experiments about. So, that example, because we work in the charity sector, we, you know, we, there's things that people will want to do. We want them to join this mailing list, we want them to donate money, we want them to understand they can text give. You know, there's, there's things that we're repeating a lot. So, um, no, I lost my point. What's your question again? <laughs> so, uh, that other people doing agile, you might find that too yeah, heavy on um, budget. Um, um, yeah. um, if if an agile the, team did what you were doing, it would still seem to be quite agile and well, lean on the budget. So yeah, well, if <laughs> if, um, if if someone was saying, oh, we need to, we need an app, we need a, a Facebook app and a, and a phone app, and you know, we wouldn't use this. Right. We would do. We would have a completely different. This is really for building um, building websites, I guess, and things that you've done before. So you. Yeah. Have so the, the, well, you know, it's 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 like a component based thing. It's why Drupal works so well for us. Is that it's there's components that we're that we're basically assembling and and mucking about with a bit to achieve an aim, rather than um, you know. Right, we need to have a sprint about this and investigate this and throw this at some users and prototype this. It gets a different. And now we're building new components, you know. Yeah. Okay. I get it. Um, I've got a question. We work with the same kind of approaches, which is 